I have to finish this. So stressful. Oh, no coffee. Got no time. I have to ask my wife about this. Hey, babe, can you give me a cup of coffee? I have this list here on how to do it. So just follow these instructions here, please. All right, sure. Hey, babe, can you give me a cup of coffee, please? All right, that's two ways of doing it. And I'm going to show you in code now how to do it in React and also with plain JavaScript. So let's do it. All right, so let's start with the imperative way of doing stuff. And in this case, I've created an installation with parcel and I have my index.html file and a script file that I'm going to fill out with some code. And I'm going to start in the index.html file to create the elements. In this case, I want to create a button. When I click the button, I want to display a random number in a div. So I had to create the elements here, specify them here in the HTML file. So I create a button element with a class of btn. And it's going to say, click me, like this. And you can see that it shows up nicely here in the browser. And then I'm going to have a div below it that has a class of output. And for now, I'm just going to display a dash. And when we click this button, as you can see here, we're going to display a random number here. So I go back to the code and inside the script.js file, I'm going to create the code that will achieve this. And uh, in this case, as we're working in an imperative way, we have to tell everything, every step that we want to do. And the first step is to grab the elements. So in a const that I call btn, and on the document, I call the query selector, and I grab my .btn, that's the button. And I also want to grab my output div. So const output equals, and from the document query selector, I'm going to grab the output, something like this. So I have my elements, and then I have my button, btn. Dot. I'm going to add an event listener. I'm going to listen for a click, and I'm going to call a function that's called handle button click. So that's the event listener, and then I have to create the function here, const handle button click. I'm using an arrow function, and you would get the event here, but we don't need that, so I won't create it. And I want to create a random number and display it in the output. And this is an arrow function, so I can make an implicit return here. So output dot inner HTML, it's going to equal math dot random, like this. So this is everything I need. So I try to click the button here and you can see that it displays a random number. So that's sweet. My little application works. And you can imagine in a large application that this will get very, very cumbersome if I have to grab all the elements and stuff like this and tell the program every little thing that you want to do. And this is an imperative way of doing stuff. And that's one of the reasons that we have libraries such as React, which I love and work a lot in. So I'm going to show you now in React, and then we can compare the two versions to each other. So let's jump into React. Okay, so we're inside React now, and I bootstrapped this application with Create React App. And I'm just going to be in the app.tsx file. And this is TypeScript, so that's why it's a TSX file. And that's because I have the habit to only create applications in React with TypeScript. So it has nothing to do with the declarative way at all. We don't have to use TypeScript, and in this case, I don't need it. But that's just my habit of creating stuff now in React. So I have this div that says declarative instead. So just below this, as before, and you notice now that I'm not in the index.html file. I create everything inside of this component in React. I create a button. It's going to have an onClick handler that's called handle button click. And it's going to say, click me, like this. We have a div that is going to get its uh, get its value from a state that I'm going to call output text. So instead of grabbing these elements myself, React will take care of this for me. I'm just going to specify a state that I want to display in this div and also have the function here, handle button click. So first I'm going to create a state, const. Output text and set output text equal from React. I call use state 
And this is TypeScript, so I have to specify this type for it, and it's going to be a string and a number, because I want to set the initial value to our dash, like this, and then it's going to be a number when we have the function that creates a random number. So, we have the const handle button click. It's going to return void, and this is also because it's TypeScript. It's good to specify the return type, and we return nothing, so that's why it's void. And I set the output text to math.random, like this. And this is everything we need to specify. We can try it out now, and you can see that it works exactly as the other example that I showed you in the imperative way. As you can see here, we don't have to grab the elements and we don't have to tell anything else to React than how we want our UI to look like. And in this case, we want a button element and we want this div here also that says declarative. And then we have a div with output. And I have the state here. I change the state when I click the button and React will take care of everything else depending on that state. Because when we change the state in React, it will re-render the components. So it's a little bit different of doing stuff, and this is a much, much easier way of doing it if you have a large application. And declarative is nothing that's specific to just React, uh, but React use the declarative way of doing stuff. So declarative is not unique to React, you have to know that. And I think this is a much, much easier way of doing stuff and creating modern applications. So if we compare them here with each other, uh, I can just grab this one here and move it inside, maybe here, uh, and uh, yeah, something like this. This is the JavaScript from the imperative way. So we have to grab every element that we want to modify with our JavaScript, and here in the React, we don't have to do that. We just specify how we want our UI to look like, and React will take care of everything else. So two different ways of doing stuff. I love this React way, actually. And in this case, we also had to specify it in the, in the, where is it? Yeah, yeah. I probably have uh, removed it or something. Yeah, anyways, so we have to specify the different tags in the HTML file. And here we don't even have to touch the HTML file because this is all JavaScript and this is actually JSX. It's not HTML, but it looks a lot like HTML. So hopefully you learned something about imperative versus declarative coding. And if you like this video, please support my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the notification button. And as always, hope seeing you in another one.